afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here in this fantastic venue and also to see everyone face to face once again. Uh, we've been on the last uh, two Future Summit uh, online meetings, and uh, you, uh, some of you may have uh, probably heard me talking about proofing for packaging, new approaches for proofing for packaging. And I want to uh, like to uh, hook on to that one and uh, talk a little bit about producing samples for uh, prototypes for packaging and also how this technology can be used for other applications in fields outside the packaging industry. So I, I think some of you may know CGS. Um, safe to say I want to be very brief about that. Uh, the company has been around for about 30, 35 years in this industry. We're about 90, uh, 90 people around the globe and uh, have a worldwide presence with distributors and uh, offices uh, in the educated markets. Um, our core expertise is, um, if you want to, anything which has to do with color. Color management, uh, this, includes, this includes also your classic, uh, classic paper proofing, we're also one of the heavyweights in the industry when it comes to selling uh, inkjet paper. We're still about uh, two and a half million square meters worldwide per year selling paper. Um, other than that, uh, color server technology. We're using this color server technology, for instance, to hook up to any kind of digital devices. This can be uh, industrial uh, inkjet printing. This can be um, uh, also classic analog uh, printing for packaging like flexo, offset, or gravure. Um, other than that, that workflow, um, pre-press and press optimization technology. Ten years ago, we started uh, looking into a dedicated system for anything which is packaging proofing. This can be rigid or flexible, it's even something like uh, metal printing, and we have been very successful doing so in the last ten years. So to understand what really proofing is about, let's have a quick look uh, Back into the past, when you, um, when you look really at the first early days of printing, uh, proofing was really a test print on press. So in other words, before you mass produce something, you do a sample uh, before you throw anything away. And even today, you know, you have packaging companies, they are going on press and produce a sample just to show their customer how would their product eventually later on look on press. There's companies like, for instance, Procter & Gamble, they're spending sometimes 150,000 euros buying press time um, just to play around on press. Still, there was always the idea to do this um, inexpensively off press. And if you look, uh, if you look back, the, first, the first, very first approaches to this were overlay, uh, overlay copies, oxalate copies, and then followed by, for many, many years, uh, flatbed proofing presses. And then the first Digital breakthrough really came with the introduction of the iris printer. That was the first really inkjet proofing system that could be color management in a way we understand this today. Um, I actually had the pleasure to introduce this technology in the early 90s when I was working for Cytex, and uh, that was really uh, a breakthrough, I have to say. Nevertheless, having said that, it was not enough for packaging printers. It was fantastic for commercial printers, but not necessarily for packaging printers. So people like Kodak or Fuji, they used the image setting technology or image setter technology and introduced uh, laser ablation systems like the Kodak approval or Fuji final proof. Um, in Europe, at least, the Kodak approval became something you know, like a standard in high-end packaging. And believe it or not, until this very day, this technology is still around. We're just seeing you know, the end of this technology right now. And uh, as everybody knows, in, um, in the early 2000s, uh, the whole proofing market is now uh, basically uh, dominated by commodity inkjet systems like Epson proofers like that. Still, again, for packaging proofing, completely different ballgame. It's not enough. So um, if you look at commercial proofing today, everything is standardized and absolutely no-brainer to do that. Package proofing, something completely different. There are still no standards. You have an unlimited number of substrate, uh, different Printing, uh, printing processes, for instance, when you look at commercial printing, a commercial press follows a proof, i.e. a standard. In packaging, it's still the other way around, that you're doing a fingerprint of a specific press, and the, uh, the proof follows this specific, uh, specific uh, uh, press, profile, pr uh, press profile. 
The other thing is that the brand owners not only want to see a flat proof on the table, they want to have a realistic 3D sample of their work, even very early in the design stage. And if you look today and you compare proof output, prototype, uh, press, it's still there's a, there's a big gap, there's a big, uh, big difference, especially in terms of color, between all these uh, three things. And to make also things worse, what you see more and more, you have very intricate finishing effects on your packaging. And a customer not only wants to see the color, he also wants to feel it. He wants to see what kind of finishing effects you have on your product. Um, consequently, we have looked into that, you know, after we, um, after we developed this Flexpack system a few years ago, um, we had to look how to, um, how to be able to add these finishing effects, anything. Could be embossing, could be a matte gloss varnish, uh, could be special effects like drip off or so, even something like cold forming. How can this be integrated? And what we've done is, um, you, yeah, you actually may know, uh, some people are saying, why don't you just take a UV inkjet printer? You know, it can add layers, can do all that. Yes, it can, but it cannot do the color side because it's, the printing is very coarse, the color space is not there. So what we're doing is we're actually combining two different technologies. One is eco-solvent for anything but just color, and one is um, uh, UV technology for anything but just finishing effects. Of course, what you need is, a, uh, is an in-between register system, in-between both printing systems. So we are able to put a uh, register punch in between, so your finishing effects are absolutely accurately on your, uh, on your color-printed, eco-solvent-printed uh, proof or prototype. Here's an example I want to show you. This is, um, um, I think, a shampoo label or something like this. If you have various tactile effects on it, you also have some, some metallic printings or so. This is, uh, this is something we can really mimic on these two printing systems. Or here's um, um, one of my favorite samples, uh, Russian chocolate. It has a lot of different finishing effects like uh, you know, embossing patterns, very intricate effects on this K or whatever it is. This is actually um, a cold foiling, and on top of the cold foiling, we have added uh, this uh, clear varnish uh, pattern, also with a little UV printer. So this is really something you can achieve uh, using that technology. And bear in mind, uh, it's a color, it's color accurate, so it's not just some color, uh, it's actually contract proof quality. So as of today, we have about, uh, give or take, 500 systems in the market worldwide. They are being used throughout the industry. Could be, uh, could be printers, pre-press companies, designers, um, uh, and printers, of course, doing anything from carton labels, even something which is a very successful niche for us is uh, metal printing. In the process, we have replaced about 50 to 60 uh, one of, uh, of these legacy systems like Kodak Approval or, or Fujifilm. And it's probably, I have to say, the most successful dedicated proofing system for packaging in the market, and it has the lowest cost per proof in the industry. Um, we did not stop there. So for years, you know, a lot of customers came up to us and saying, we want something which prints directly on substrate. On the eco-solvent, you need an in-between layer, so we're using typically a lamination technology. We're printing on this laminate, laminate this onto the original substrate. Some people say, we want something which prints directly on the substrate. For instance, um, very obvious, uh, something like a shrink film. When you use a shrink film, you cannot hot laminate anything on that because it would react. What they also want to see on a shrink film is not only the color, you want to see how is the distortion of the artwork coming out. And the only way to do this is on the original film with ink, which does not hinder the shrinkage. So we put our heads together uh, with another company from Japan, Muto Japan, and we've developed a system which, use it, um, which uses multi-resin or multi-pigmented um, resin inks. These are non-toxic, actually food-grade inks, have a very good color space, and also have white, so you can print white with a very high density, and it prints on almost anything. Very, very thin flexibles like 10 micron films, uh, uncoated label stock, metal, um, anything which is film, so almost anything. It's heat resistant, so the ink does not change. <clears throat> For instance, when you print on IML film, you want to inject the hot mold. It will not 
uh, lead to a color shift. Or you go on metal and cure it, put varnish on top, go in your curing oven with 200 degrees, it will not affect the, uh, the color of the inks. Before we go into something else, um, just a little look at the hardware. This is this very compact 24-inch uh, Muto printer. What you see, it has a motorized uh, take-on unit, so you can actually run it unattendedly. When the prints come out of the printer, they are uh, instantly dry, so you can just put it in the corner, let it run, let it do its thing, go from roll to roll. Or you can also use sheets up to 1.6 millimeter thickness. Could be cardboard, as I said, could be metal, could be anything. So um, I would like to make a break here and go on to something entirely different. Um, a lot of people don't really have noticed what kind of really revolution has taken place over the last couple of years. It's all based on typically on uh, single-pass inkjet systems. And uh, you know there's almost unlimited uh, applications for that. Could be automotive, could be printed electronics. And of course, one niche is uh, what is referred to as home decoration. It's in itself, it's a very small niche, but it's still very, very big, and it's uh, very mul uh, multifaceted. So um, just as a couple of examples, um, for instance, it's flooring, ceramic tiling. It's being produced digitally by now. Anything wallpaper, embossed wallpapers. Um, very popular in America is home sidings. So you're just you're taking a piece of sheet metal, overprint it with a, with a wooden design, and just nail it to your house or something like garage doors, uh, window frames. So you have a plastic window frame and you put uh, inkjet printed, you would uh, put a wooden decker over it. Um, our uh, subsidiary in the States uh, has identified this since quite some time as a very lucrative market, I have to say. And um, for instance, they put a team of dedicated specialists together on the sales side, but also on the technical side. And uh, when they go to potential customers, talk to them. First of all, it's quick, it's difficult to find them because you cannot say and look for printers. They don't see themselves as printers. They see themselves as manufacturers of flooring, for instance. So these people have, uh, they have bought this digital ink set, uh, inkjet thing uh, to sort of diversify their product offerings or enter new markets. And that thing puts ink or chemicals on a, on a piece of wooden plank. Okay, so uh, they're not seeing themselves as printers. Okay, so um, what they what they don't know how to do is um, how to make this thing print the same a week from now. Or they have several devices and they want to basically print the same thing across a fleet of systems. What you need to tell them, uh, you need color management. It's exactly the same thing like in. Uh, in, does in, in normal printing, commercial printing or conventional printing. It's exactly the same thing. When you buy something for your home, uh, what is the, the main driving factor for you? It's color. That is the main driving factor when you decide when you buy a curtain or a flooring or something like this, and that needs to be right. So, um, as I said, you know, they, they know all that uh, in the States. And they have basically um, come up with, um, or they are basically able to offer you a turnkey solution for this market. So our, um, our colleagues in the US, they are the, um, they are the distributors, US distributors for Metis 3D scanning. So anything which is image capture, they're doing on the Metis. They have uh, the AVA CAD CAM software for editing and uh, image manipulation. And all that is combined with our color management technology. So, for instance, like the press measure, which um, makes sure that you harmonize color across the systems over time, or as I said, like over uh, a bunch of systems. Um, last but not least, uh, proofing software, which allows you to use the files either in 2D uh, proofing, i.e. paper-based proofing, or 3D proofing, we'll come into that in a minute, which I refer to as haptic proofing. So what the uh, what a manufacturer wants, he wants an industrial process, a defined industrial process, using color management technology, uh, using profiling to, uh, technology, to achieve exactly the same output across a bunch of different machines. As you can see here, you have your little uh, Roland UV proofer, you have a, a flatbed machine, and you have your final um, digital 
production machine, uh, Barbarian in this case. Could be something else as well, of course. Um, you don't really want to harmonize only uh, across a number of machines or over time. You also want to do this over rotation. A lot of manufacturers, they have uh, subsidiaries or they have plants in Europe, in the US, but also in China. So they want to make sure that they print exactly the same thing and exactly the same color in all of their locations. And the worst thing is, you want to buy a piece of flooring and you want to basically put this in another room as well, and uh, you buy this of this teak wood or whatever design, and uh, the, the whole thing is different. You have batch to batch variations. Okay? So, um, just to give you a brief idea how the whole process works, and I'm just condensing it a little bit, uh, there's some other components to it. But essentially, you have this very nice piece of wood, this plank of wood, and you want to make a laminate floor from that. And uh, so the first thing is you scan this in the matte scanner, and what it does, it creates the color information, the embossing information, but also the structural information, the structure of the wood. This is all basically in a single scan, you get essentially all the important information in terms of uh, color again, structure, and also the surface properties of the wood. This is all contained in one single scan. It's typically uh, a very big RGB uh, TIFF image, which you know, can have several gigabytes, actually, one single scan. Um, and when you, for instance, you can use these files, for instance, to produce um, flooring, and this flooring can have a very distinct tactile 3D surface. And uh, uh, this can be achieved when you use this file, what you, what you previously scanned. This can be used in traditional production or traditional printing. Um, this can be you know, an engraving or, or gravure process, or as I said, um, a digital application, which is typically multi-pass printing. So in other words, you are just doing additive printing one, um, you know, one print after the other, and you build up the height of this structure. So as I said, these files can also be used for proofing. Uh, I, I mentioned this before. For instance, like 2D proofing, your classic paper-based proofs. Uh, incidentally, we have a company, a large uh, flooring manufacturer in the US, and when you, uh, when you decide when you want to put a new floor in, you, you typically go to your local DIY store, and you get this bulks of planks, and you probably have to deposit $20 and bring it back the next day, you know, just to have a sample and put this at home just onto your floor. Uh, this company is doing it different. They're doing sample books printed on inkjet paper. And if you say, like, you know, I have 600 square meters of office space, and I want to put this very nice uh, Caucasian wood in, they're printing 10 meters for you. So you can put this on the ground and see how does it look like in practice. This is one application. But also it can be used to create this haptic proof, uh, for instance, on a Roland, little Roland LEF uh, UV machine. So what, this, uh, or what the scanner creates is, um, apart from the color information, it creates what people are referring to as slices. It's basically uh, multiple separations, um, which are building up eventually the height. And this is done with the clear or white varnish. And then the last, uh, the last layer onto that, that adds the color. Um, that is really your color accurate uh, CMYK color on top of uh, the height structure. What I said early on, um, I said early on, color is, is the thing, is the, the sole and, and only thing. When you talk about flooring, uh, when you talk about, this is, by the way, proof um, produced on a UV machine. Um, when you talk about something like this or, or, um, or other things, uh, it's not only the color. It's, you know, the sheen. How does it, how does it shine when you look at it? What is, what is the wood grain when you touch it? What is that to a touch? How does, how does that feel like? You want to do this. And this is the way uh, when you produce something on an inexpensive inkjet print. It's a very uh, inexpensive way to create something like this and answer all, this, uh, all these questions. You know? And also, it, uh, because you can have it within a very short period of time, it will also shorten your approval processes and answer your questions regarding color consistency of the entire process. That's it from my side. We have a little tabletop outside, so if you have questions regarding whether it's packaging or something like this, we're more, to, more than happy to answer that. 
Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.